Greetings Guardians, my name is Bife here. So after the death of the Witch Queen, the Osmium Dynasty's remaining members are starting to look a little thin. There is however one last member of the original Three Hive Gods that remains and she stands in unwavering servitude to the witness. Shivu Arath, the Hive God of War. Unlike the Taken King and the Witch Queen before her, Shivu's presence on the battlefield has been one that is coordinated in lockstep with the Witness. Oryx was content to pursue the Witness's agenda, but not necessarily whilst disrupting his own plans, and the Witch Queen of course betrayed the architect of the final shape entirely. It appears that Shivu Arath never lost focus. She has challenged us on many fronts, and on many occasions, be it with the establishment of her cryptoliths on the Tangled Shore in the Season of the Hunt, or the Siege of the Dreaming City in the Season of the Lost. But it is here and now in the Season of the Seraph that we see a character finally making a further interaction with one of the last three descendants of the old Osmium King of Fundament's Osmium Court. It is perhaps fitting that the character to make such an interaction is none other than the monarch who freed her sister, severed her worm, and pushed back the war god's forces and their old leader Kelgarath. I am speaking, of course, about Mara Sov. Today I wanted to talk about how Shivu Arath clearly views the approaching conflict that might kick off with Lightfall, and in particular I wanted to discuss a moment of confrontation that the two royals had that would act as a prelude to the coming war. But first, I think we need to add a little bit of context. Marasov and Shivu Arath have been sparring in one way or another for a little over a year or so now. Mara's territories probably still, needless to say, are menaced by Shivu Arath on a regular basis, but all of this really would have begun a year before Marasov's return to us in the Season of the Lost. Back in the Season of the Hunt, Cryptoliths were being established on the Awoken Shores as a means of creating a beachhead for Shivu's invading army. Later on in that same year, with the establishment of said beachhead, Shivu Arath's forces would charge through and make their presence known in no subtle manner, led by a great hive knight called Kelgarath, risen from bones. When these forces, and Kelgarath himself, were soundly defeated by us, Saint-14 and Mara Sov, as we resurrected Osiris and freed Savathun from her worm, it became clear that the forces of the War God were not even close to being depleted. Their offensive might have been blunted here, but it was clear that they were assembling on the Ascendant Plane for a massive invasion at a later date. To the best of our knowledge, the amassing forces of the Hive God of War are still there and are still growing. Mara Salva says as much in the opening mission of the season when she talks to us via Hollow. With Nezarak out of play, our enemies pursue a killing stroke. Aramis has yet to resurface, but in her absence, agents of Zivu or Wrath swarm Europa. House Salvation seems to be assisting them in despoiling Clovis Bray's installations. While I've yet to discern an exact strategy, Anna and I agree they may be trying to wrest control of the Warmind's power on the Witness's behalf. I fear they're forging inroads for an invasion. Zivu or Wrath's forces mobilize within the Ascendant Plane. The forces that Shivu or Wrath has been assembling and mobilizing within the Ascendant Plane have been entrenched and gathered since the time of the Season of the Lost, which means they've been doing this for over a year, preparing, and getting ready to strike. This has given them time and spacing that they need to clearly prepare for a larger scale war that has either begun now with the attempt to disable the war mind permanently, or is being slightly diverted for the time being, as it is a cause that will allow the witness to conduct some other objective before the main assault can begin. Either way, this bodes ill for us and for the rest of the forces in our alliance, be they Elixni, Cabal, or Awoken. Amongst those forces, Mara Sov has had a great deal of familiarity with the God of War before, not only because of the past skirmishes she's had with Shivor Wrath, but also because of her celestial navigation through the Ascendant Plane that has played host to both of them. The Ascendant Plane has played host to Mara as she sought various secrets, that might grant her an edge against the Black Fleet. 
she had to be rescued from its depths by her Tekians in time given how deeply she traveled, and she was only able to make it out after the Tekians allowed themselves to be scattered as opposed to being captured by the Hive God of War who was hot on their tail. This is a pursuit that has happened before, and it is something which has brought Marasov and the God of War to blows in a different venue. However, now we read about a time in the lore where she ventured back more recently and faced the God of War again, in a theater of the mind that is set within Ascendant Space that is only possible because of the rules of Ascendant Space, where paracausality and will will make things real, and where such gestures as words can become as sharp as blades. And so, like something out of the journals of Toland the Shattered, the Queen of the Reef went to face off against the Hive God of War in this initial sparring. One who had built a tower to see the stars faced off against one whose armies had destroyed everything. But unlike in Toland's stories, the tale of the supremacy of the Queen from the Country of Armies was not so clear and definite. Both had poison in their bites. And we can tell all of this thanks to the appropriately named Manticore, the new exotic Viced SMG. Its lore tab reads as follows. Across the Ascendant Plain, in the Theatre of the Mind, a queen and a god of war do battle. Within their arena, elocution becomes a spear and conviction a shield. You are small-minded, stabs the war god short-sighted. You value life over victory. Her words are sharp, her thoughts malicious. The queen parries and counters. You are single-minded, she thrusts back at her opponent. Myopic. You are war and nothing else. A glancing blow. The war god retorts. War is eternal. You are not. You wither and die like your armies, your subjects. The war god's spearhead finds purchase. The queen is struck, but not felled. She adjusts her tactics and attempts once more to puncture her foe's armor. War is ever hungry, she answers. You must fight forever, or it will consume you instead of your enemies. In truth, you are not war, merely its avatar. A deft maneuver. The war god is surprised and pleased. In response, she pivots to a new angle of attack. Your brother shuns you. The queen falters. It is an opening in her defenses she failed to cover adequately. Psychic blood seeps from a mental wound. But she rallies. Your sister plotted against you. She lunges forward. She freed herself from the bondage you still endure, and she did so at my hand. The queen feels the spear pierce the war god's hide. Something akin to a gasp echoes throughout the ascendant plane as the war god takes a step back. And then, the war god laughs. You are a worthy foe she says as she sheathes her spear. I look forward to our next battle. She departs the field. The queen is alone, bleeding and spent. The war has begun. This conflict has been brewing between Shivu Arath and our allies, and it is one that will come to a head at some point in the future. It's likely that what we're seeing now is nothing more than a minor skirmish compared to what we will see soon. When the God of War does arrive in force, which will only be in a matter of time, we should look to what they did on Tora Battle, the homeworld of the Cabal, to see what they will bring. It is worth remembering that Shivu Arath's forces arrived in a moment of slaughter and bloodshed, invited inwards through ceremonies, conducted, partly with the assistance of Savathun, and partly through the words and deeds of Keitel as she struck down her old friend Amun Arath. Hive madness had infected them, 
so it is worth keeping an eye out for it in our own ranks. Should we fail to do so, the result is all visible to see in the remnants of Keitel's ascendancy. Utter destruction, billions of lives lost, and an unending slaughter the likes of which humanity will be unlikely to survive. But at least when we do see that day, we will see it with Marasov by our side. A fearsome combatant, who has dueled with the god of war before, and perhaps even held her own, if not, won. That's all from me for now though, I hope you enjoyed the video. This has got to be one of my favorite pieces of lore from the entire season. It's awesome to see the idea of the psychic sparring between Mara Sov and Shivu Arath, watching both of them land blows and really face off against each other, sort of treating each other almost as equals. It gives us a true idea of the magnitude of Shivu's power. She was able to walk away from Mara Sov's clear and quite pointed attack. But anyway, Enough of that. If you have any of your own thoughts, leave them down below in the comments section. And if you want more Destiny lore from this season, as well as from Lightfall coming up in a few months, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe. And of course, also do note that if you enjoyed this video, you can always go ahead and leave a like. Always helps out. But as per usual, know that your viewership, as always, is quite enough for me. And in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Rodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.